Welcome to the My Cloud Coach Podcast. Today I'm speaking with my friend Keith Enright, and we're talking about landing your first job in IT. But before that, maybe I should start with explaining why I'm starting a podcast, especially this far after the pandemic has ended. So my goal with this channel was always to do more live streams. Uh, I've wanted to, I've done a couple though, and it really feels like I'm talking into a void. There's a lot of latency. If I ask a question, it, there's a delayed response and I can't just sit and wait. That wouldn't be entertaining. So YouTube recently announced this feature where we can take a playlist and convert it into a podcast or market as a podcast, and that will be available on YouTube Music. And the plan with this is also to distribute it on other platforms as well. I always feel like it's better to talk to a person than talk to a void. So that's the goal with this podcast. Uh, the podcast is focused on IT careers, certification, and learning. Learning is really important in IT, especially now with the cloud-driven, uh, everything's cloud-driven and changing rapidly. So my plan is to do this monthly to start. We'll see where that goes. And uh, please let me know if you enjoy this type of content. I'm really looking forward to your feedback. Let's move on to today's guest. Uh, today's guest is Keith Enright. We've been friends for over 20 years. Uh, the topic is getting your first job in IT. I thought that would be a good topic for my first podcast. Keith is a good person to have on for this. Uh, keep listening to find out why. Before we start, I did have a couple technical issues and had to switch the location where I was recording. Uh, the background's a little different, but it should sound all okay and everything. I was kind of frazzled too uh, because of that technical issue and I forgot to put Keith's image on the screen. So for the first few minutes, it's just me talking. You can hear him, but that changes. Uh, if you're listening to this only, it won't matter to you anyway. So let's get to it. Here's Keith and I talking about landing your first IT job. This podcast is sponsored by Seraltos. Check out the Seraltos blog, YouTube channel, and courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, and hybrid identities with Windows AD and Azure AD. Links are in the show notes. Welcome to the first episode of the My Cloud Coach podcast. Today we we're talking about getting your first IT job, and I thought it'd be fitting uh, to have my guest join me today for this discussion. Keith Enright is a services manager at Bowman & Brook, a Minneapolis law firm. Keith has over 30 years of experience in IT and is responsible for one of the best hiring decisions in the history of time, or at least the last 100 years. Uh, Keith hired me for my first IT position about 23-ish years ago, and we've been good friends ever since. So welcome, Keith. Uh, glad to have you here. Hey, Travis. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing okay. We've had a little technical dis difficulties leading up to this, but I think we're we're doing better now. Yeah, we've already got the blooper reel. We just have to get the uh, <laughs> yeah. actual podcast out. Yeah. Uh, let's start about this. You know, we're talking about uh, landing your first IT job. So uh, let's talk about the market real quick. It seems like there were a lot of open positions a while ago, um, not that long ago. Are you still seeing that? I am. I, I, it seems to me that you can uh, inter interpolate that, uh, because I have a, such a hard time hiring people for the positions I have open, um, there must be a lot of jobs still out there. And it's, it sure seems like it's still a buyer's market. Uh, the person who's looking for a job, um, has lots of choices that they can choose from. And, uh, of course I always like to think that they should come work for me like you have twice. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they go other places and we keep looking. So, uh, it sure seems like it's, a definitely a healthy market out there. Although to my annoyance at times. Yeah. I, I heard a statistic this last week that one out of every three sec IT security jobs is left open, which is, you know, that's, that's not only, uh, surprising, but maybe a little concer concerning that there's that much of a demand for something so important. Yeah. I feel a little less secure after you just saying that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so as somebody's entering the market, what are the essential skills or qualifications that uh, employees are looking for when, when they're interviewing or searching for candidates for that entry-level position? Well, uh, as the services manager at a law firm, we have um, 12 offices around the country, I believe it is. And I have staff and eight of them. And I will say that I'm not 
necessarily looking for someone who is um, coming in completely green from a job perspective, but I have been known to do it. And if you're the right candidate, I'm, I'm happy to bring you on board. Um, but when I'm looking for somebody, um, I'm looking for somebody who can support attorneys. And that is something that is a bit of a special skill set, as you probably remember. Um, so when I'm looking for somebody with those initial skills, obviously the computer skills are, are very, very important. Um, but I think that's something that people need to hear uh, coming into the industry is it's not everything. Um, I probably look for 60 to 65% um, strong computer skills. The rest of it is more soft skills. Um, are you able to string a sentence together? Are you personable? Can I, can you, do you kind of give off a vibe of being uh, a, a bit gregarious? Uh, somebody who, um, you know, the old, the old stereotype of the really good computer guy who sits in the back room playing with the blinky lights. Um, you know, that person has a lot of great computer skills, but they may not have the skills that I'm looking for uh, from an entry level person. And yeah. I think we can a lot of times equate entry level to help desk or service desk. Um, that's not always the case. Um, but yeah, it, you know, I, definitely come to the table showing me what you know about computers and the, and the whatever you else, whatever you might be interested in, in computers, but also show me that you're a, a well-rounded individual who's uh, not scared to talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you know, law firms get, get, uh, are often referred to as, you know, when stories about uh, demanding end users. And yeah. I worked in multiple industries, including a law firm, and every industry has a group of people who are very, very specialized, very good at what they're doing. It's just not computers. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. easy for people to get frustrated when things aren't working right. So yeah, problem solving and communication, uh, those are really important uh, in the IT space, not just Absolutely. the computer skills. Yeah. So as somebody's coming into the field, uh, how, how can they gain relevant experience? I mean, what, what kind of stuff um, are you looking for from that, that, that shows they have potential? Well, um, you know, having put a number on it at the beginning, when you let everybody know, I've been at this for 30 plus years. Um, it was a much different industry back then in that a lot of us coming into the industry were learning computers kind of at the same time. I, I, mean, I was a bit of a late bloomer as far as the computer industry goes. I got my first job at 28 and uh, even really didn't even study computers themselves till my early to mid twenties uh, leading up to that. Today, and of course there are always exceptions, but today, I'll, I'll, I'll use air quotes for everybody, everybody knows computers. Um, people are going into the computer industry having used them all their lives. And the people that they're supporting in many, many cases are have been using them for years and years and years. So it's a bit of a different skill set these days. Um, but if you're just coming into the industry, I think it's going to kind of be given that because you have an interest in this industry, that you're going to know computers pretty darn well. I mean, we all, we all know the person who says, Hey, hire my son or hire my neighbor. They're really good at computers. Well, from their, from their vantage point, what that means is their, their, their kid knows how to get on the internet and that's amazing to them. Um, but when you knows, come knows to, how to restart to, a router, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But when you come to me looking for that job, and I've been there before, I've, I've interviewed the people that um, the boss down the hall says, you know, they're really good at computers and they come in and yeah, they know how to use a computer, but they don't really know what the job is about. So when you're looking for a, 
for that first job. Um, I will say, and maybe I'm a bit old fashioned on this, but I would say still come to the table with that certificate or that degree. Um, now notice I didn't say certification, um, not, not a sort of, not necessarily a certification in one small area, but some sort of school certificate or some sort of one or two year degree. Now, a lot of people will say, well, that does, that was, that's just a waste of money. And that doesn't teach me what I need to know when I get to the position. Yes and no. Um, it gives you a lot of good concepts. And for me, one of the things that it does, if you come to me with a one-year degree or a two-year degree, that piece of paper, you know, the computer stuff I can teach you, the stuff that we need to do in this position, I can teach you. But that certificate shows me that one, you have the ability to learn. It shows me that um, just by getting through school, you're probably pretty good at time management, project management, um, you know, all from a, from a general concepts of that type of stuff. It shows that you're able to take on a task and finish it. And that is something that you're going to deal with every day um, at your job. And especially if, if you were working for me. Um, so, you know, to get that level one position or just get to get that entry position. Also, don't be afraid to take that, that simple job, even if it is um, working for Comcast or working for, working for, uh, I can't think of another large place right now, but even if you're doing that level one on the phone, help desk type work, you know, set yourself a goal. Even if you only do it for six months just to get that first job. And believe me, those type of places will hire you if you show some smarts and show the ability to, as I said before, string a sentence together. Yeah. Um, when I then am looking for somebody, uh, at my law firm, uh, the person that did that six months or a year of, um, help desk on the phones, you're going right to the top of the list right there. Yeah. To have some experience versus none. I mean, yeah. that, that's always better. And, 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 uh, even, even though some of those, those entry level, uh, big company jobs, you know, they, they may not be that glamorous, but they do. If you can, if you can stick with it for a while, do it, you will learn something. I mean, even, even if it's what you don't want to do, there's still, a, there's still learning. And if you can stick with it, that develops a track record. Now you, you, you said, you know, you don't necessarily look for certifications. One of the things I like about it is this is still one of the industries where you can, you don't really need a college degree to make a good living in it. You know, those, those types of jobs are, are, are becoming uh, fewer and fewer. Um, I, I've, I've spent a lot, I'm very involved with certifications and I think, you know, from the way I've always saw it is, is it proves you have taken the time to learn something and you have taken a test that, that has, um, proven you, 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 you've learned it. You know, one mm -hmm. of the things that mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I've heard people say certifications only show, you know, what's on the test. And I think that's, uh, the stupidest thing I've ever heard because yeah, yeah that's the point. It shows yeah, exactly. that you, learn, exactly. you, you know, what's on the test, you know, even that may be a, a limited subset of the knowledge that you need for that job. It's still, it's still a starting point. Uh, and I certainly didn't mean to poo poo certifications at all, but I was coming at it from the aspect of somebody's very, very first job. Mm -hmm. um, yes. That even us, even though I put it at the bottom of my list, it's still a good thing to yeah. do. Having that certification. Um, I just happen to find certifications to be much more meaningful once you've been in the industry for a while and you've dipped your toes in a lot of different areas and then you go get that certification and it really helps yeah. cement what you do. It, it does help to have some hands-on experience around it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
that that's I guess that kind of leads me to my next question. We kind of answered it, but I'll I'll throw it out there for a newcomer coming into the the IT field. How do they gain that relevant experience? You know, before even their first job. I... <laughs> well, I've always been impressed by uh, the people that do. Um, you know, when I grew up, when I was 18 years old, um, well, let's say when I was in high school, our computer lab was one Vic 20 computer with a cassette <laughs> tape drive on it. And you only got 10 weeks of class and you had to come in at six in the morning so you could get your hour on the, on the computer for, yeah. for the, for the job. So I think that experience, um, as I kind of alluded to earlier, it kind of comes or get organically for a lot of people these days. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm very comfortable talking to somebody who doesn't really have much experience at all because I know it's been part of their growing up. And if they're interested in going into the computer industry, that speaks to me that they have spent uh, a lot more time under the hood of these, uh, of the hardware and the software than most have. So I think, and to speak like an old person, you know, this generation, <laughs> uh, this generation definitely has a step up within that area. Um, yeah. But, you know, to get that experience, um, I, I hate to just bring out the old buzzwords, but they, they, they work, you mm -hmm. know, volunteer, be indispensable, wherever, wherever you're part of a group, be that computer guy or yeah. be that computer person, um, whether it's at a church or some volunteering that you do or some organization that you're involved with, or in Travis's case, if you're working for a moving company and uh, you, you know how to, you know, reboot the accounting software, that type of thing, you know, just be indispensable, be the person um, who people talk about in awe that they know how to do all this stuff that they haven't even really been asked to do. Yeah, it's, that is uh, the, the backstory there is that is the entry point for my IT career was uh, the accounting people knew how to work Excel. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's I, I often think about um, because of my my background being in infrastructure that, you know, the starting point for a lot of IT positions is the service desk, but there is other, uh, you know, areas and ways and development is the other one. And there, mm -hmm. if you're, if you're looking at developing and, and you're trying to get your foot in the door someplace, look at or open source projects. There's tons of them. You can contribute to those and that starts building up a portfolio of stuff that you can go to an employer. And that shows not only that, I guess one of the things I think we're we're kind of landing on is you don't want to walk into an interview and say, I'm ready to learn, teach me. You 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 have to be, here's what I'm learning already. This is what I've done to get to this point. Give us examples on how you're teachable. Yeah. Exactly. And what you've taught yourself. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about the interview process what what things can somebody do uh to prepare for that and you know one of the one of the things that i this leads me to is um when 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 i was started when i started my it career you know the way i stood out was to buy some really expensive nice paper to print out my resume <laughs> and send it in uh that's not happening that's not relevant i mean you can try it you can try it yeah i mean it might not hurt but um, i'll tell you one thing it scans black and white no matter what happens <laughs> no matter what color it is yeah right so what can people do cuz i've always felt like there's this there's an HRIS, which is the uh, Human Resources Information System, you know, the, that it, you could call it Indeed or Monster or whatever, that kind of ingest a lot of data and you need to filter it. So the first thing that a lot of places do is, you know, they say always include the keywords from the job description in the resume. Um, that to me seems like an unfortunate byproduct of being able to mass upload resumes, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else once, once it gets in the hand of a person? Well, first off, I will say that, um, 
uh, Travis, you didn't stick out by the color of your paper. You stuck out by the fact that you sat in a broken chair uh, <laughs> and almost flipped over backwards. Well, uh, see, that's that's after you after the, the initial true. resume, though. That's, that's the true. Interview. That's true. If you pretend to fall out of the chair or almost fall out of the chair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, that being said, I don't remember how the hell you got in to see us. <laughs> um, as far as that initial um that initial blush that gets you gets my attention on you um i'm not looking for making sure all the the words from the resume are or sorry all the words from the application are in your resume if i see them like that then i feel like um uh you spent the time at you know just uh creating a facade um, that won't necessarily, uh, get to where you need to go. But what I'm looking for is a resume that is, um, organized, nicely formatted, shows the relevant, um, skills that you have, um, a resume with 600 buzzwords, starting out with AS 400, going all the way through alphabetically. I don't care about that. I want to see what you really have been doing, what you really have um, worked on, and you know the size of your team, um, that type of thing. But but keep it simple and keep it clear and keep it full of relevant information. As far what, as yeah, the resume goes. What's your thoughts on pictures on a resume? Or, uh, you know. Your, your face uh, portrait, I guess. Um, okay. Well, that, I guess that's where I start to feel old school. I find it weird. Um, <laughs> my, my initial reaction, if I get a resume with a picture on it, is um, uh, I'm not hiring a realtor or an insurance agent. <laughs> um, and I just, it just seems like it's, uh, area of a piece of paper that could have been much better used for information. Yeah. I, I, I saw it recently and I was a little surprised and then I started thinking because this was somebody entering the market, you know, who, mm -hmm. who was new mm -hmm. and you know, that's the, the media landscape and, and the way <laughs> younger generations work, it's probably not that big of a deal. And, and, you know, uh, most of the time, um, your name, when you, when somebody gets your resume, it's probably going to be a Google search and they're going to see your picture anyway. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I guess it really, it, it doesn't, I don't think it just, I don't think it, it's negative, but it certainly isn't helping, you know, it's not, it's not making things stand out. That's the way I feel about it. Another, another good point is if I do do a Google search on you, I, hopefully it's, that's the picture that you were going to put on your resume is what I see. And, uh, <laughs> not something more interesting, shall we say? Yeah. And isn't that is, that was my lead up to, and, and you know, Google search yourself <laughs> and, yeah. and make sure what is out there and available is relevant is, is, is putting forth a good that. face. Yeah, yeah. A good face. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because I, I remember early on, we as hiring managers were told you can't Google people, you know, the HR didn't want to, th there was a whole bunch of confusion around the stance of that. And uh, I can guarantee you, if you put in a resume, people are going to, going to search and even just LinkedIn, but, but they'll see it. If it's out there, they'll find it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's perfectly true. And so once oh, well, I was just going to add it's public information too. So it's, you know, that I, I've, I've heard some people complain that's not fair. That's not, shouldn't be relevant and it, it's fair and it's relevant yeah, <laughs> for sure. It absolutely is. So as far as, so, you know, that'll help you get in the door, um, for the, the technical interview. Um, but I can tell you that I've done a lot of interviews where I've been really excited to have the person come in from what I've learned on paper, so to speak, and only to have them get there and be quite disappointed. Um, you know, once you're in the door, once you've sat down in front of me, 
you know, a few things to think about. First off, and this would seem really simple, but if your interview is on a Tuesday and you've known about it for a week, please take the time that weekend before to figure out how the heck to get where you're going. <laughs> um, having somebody show up 10, 15, 20 minutes late by saying, I couldn't find the place. Um, I get it, but you know, use some troubleshooting skills there, you know, do some research beforehand so that we don't have to have that conversation and you're not starting from behind the eight ball. Um, trust your skills, know, know what you know, and be confident in how you describe it. Um, in my interview, um, I rarely am asking gotcha questions. Uh, but the, you know, the technical aspect is where those can come up. Um, you know, somebody who's asking a question may ask you something that, you know, by a slightly different concept or term, um, you know, try not to let that throw you ask a follow-up question. Oh, do you mean, or how I understand this to be is this instead of what you said, you know, ask those questions. Don't, don't be put off by the gotcha and just kind of freeze up. So, like I said, trust your skills. Um, don't get nervous. Don't get upset. Just answer the question as best as you can or relate it to something that you do know and answer it that way. Um, I actually find that to be fairly impressive sometimes. Yeah. And if you're don't, nervous, yeah. And mm -hmm. I think if you're nervous and you're, and you think it's showing, just call it out. You know, yeah. people, people, people generally want to make you feel comfortable or want mm -hmm. the other people in the room to be comfortable. So if you say you're nervous, it's, it's typically just acknowledging that and that's to be expected. Yeah. <clears throat> Hiring can be a, as, as nerve wracking as it is for you, it's an incredible time suck for the, for the hiring manager. We don't want to go through a hundred, uh, first interviews. We don't want to have to go through a thousand resumes. When I'm sitting in front of you, I'm looking for reasons not to hire you, not reasons to hire you. By the time I have you sit down at the table, I'd love to hire you right now. I, there are many times that I've had to bite my tongue on just saying, can you start tomorrow? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's not that I'm, it's not that I'm looking for you to say the right thing to get hired. Um, I kind of want to hire you already since you're sitting there. So, you know, we're coming, uh, we come at it with a positive aspect. So, you know, feel that at least if you're yeah. in front of me, don't study a bunch of stuff. You sort of know, don't cram for an interview. Um, if, if you're, if you get asked a question that, you've for something you've never done, but last night you stayed up all night and read concepts and then you start just throwing out a few buzzwords. Um, we can tell, uh, you know, tell us about stuff that you truly do know and are comfortable doing. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're just, if you're really new to, to interviewing, find somebody to, to interview you. I mean, yeah. Do yeah. practice runs. It it helps. And one thing that I learned is is sometimes you can think you know the answer, but having to verbally articulate it is is it doesn't always come out the way you think. So having that opportunity to do a couple dry runs uh, really helps. And there's there's one other the one other question I always liked that really showed a person's interest. Uh, what do you know about the company? Yeah you do some research, know what you're getting into. Cause that mm -hmm. is, that is a good one to, to, uh, ask and see how, you know, how enthused they are in the position. And I will also say that, um, one of my favorite questions to ask, and this gets into the 35 to 40% of how I'm interviewing you. That's not, computer or IT related. One of my favorite questions is tell me something interesting about yourself. That's not on your resume, mm -hmm. you know, and don't let that throw you. If you can't answer that question, um, I start to wonder, 
there's yeah. got to be something interesting about you that has nothing to do with uh, computers. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one uh, uh, was, uh, tell me about your home lab or, you know, relevant or do you have things working at home? You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's always a good one too. And that kind of goes back to ways to prepare if you don't have experience. Uh, home lab or now that things are, a lot of things are moving to the cloud, you know, doing what you can to get some hands-on experience there is uh, very valuable. One last thing on the technical stills, skills questions that made me start to feel like a gotcha. Um, feel free to take a guess, you know, mm -hmm. you, there's no re if you know absolutely nothing about what was just asked you, um, throw it out there. Don't, don't just clam up, throw it out there and say, is it like, is it like this or is it like that? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, me as the interviewer, I'll give you some more information and that might give you something that you could latch on to, to take it off into a bit different area, but also shows, um, you know, some, some knowledge and, or troubleshooting skills, you know, asking an end user, you know, you're going to, end users are going to, if you're in a service role, end users are going to tell you things that make absolutely no sense <laughs> to you. And by, by asking questions and getting more information out of them is a lot of times how you're going to get to the resolution and you can yep. absolutely do that in an interview as well. Correct. Yeah. Uh, what are some, what are some challenges, uh, newcomers have in getting into the IT field, uh, field, uh, and how can they overcome it? So we're thinking like, you know, uh, we talked about lack of experience, imposter syndrome. Uh, is there competition? I mean, uh, if somebody wants to get started in IT, you know, where where's a good good spot to start? Rephrase that question. I'm not even <laughs> sure if I understand it. Well, or I'm maybe thinking I like. Uh, like roadblocks that people may be facing. So, um, uh, like, uh, a lack of access to resources, or maybe, maybe they're in a area of the country that doesn't have a, a lot of it. I mean, I guess it really comes down to, and that's one of the interesting things that now is you, you're not bound to a local area, uh, for that. So, uh, you know, how, how can people stand out, I guess? Um, you know how long it's been since I've interviewed for a job? Uh, <laughs> but it's, okay. you know, I'm, I'm not sure if this is an answer to your question, but you're talking about, you know, people don't have to be geographically, geographically constrained anymore. I mean, if you are out in the middle of nowhere, um, and there's not a lot of IT industry where you're at, um, you know, going back to that, um, getting that initial help desk, uh, experience, I'm sure I know there are many, many companies out there mm -hmm. that will allow you to, you know, hook into their phone system and do that from home. Right. Um, so, you know, getting that type of job first can help you, um, stand out. I hired somebody last year, um, who did help desk, um, for a law firm support company. Um, and he did that from home. In fact, he moved from one state to another with that job and then decided to come, wanted to get, actually work in an office. And that one year of experience that he had doing nothing but phone support, um, you know, got them in the door. I mean, that type being able to, um, use the opportunities that you have, um, can get you far. Yeah. Now you've been, you've been interviewing people remote for quite some time, even pre pandemic, but yeah, uh, that is one other thing to point out is that, uh, just because you're at home in front of your computer, computer doesn't mean you shouldn't try to step things up a little bit. Yes. Uh, yes. watch your background. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Um, and... don't wear t-shirts like Travis and I are in right now. <laughs> um, 
I'm not asking you to put on a three piece suit at home. Absolutely not. But you know, it, it is, it is a job interview. Um, and you know, treat it as such. Um, I've done job interviews, video job interviews for, with people who are, um, sitting in their car. That's fine, I guess, especially if it's, uh, during lunch from the job that you have right now, but you know, I want to, I want to be able to see you. I want to be able to interact with you with all the visual cl clues that you need. And if your iPad sitting in your lap and all I can see is up your nose and it looks like a two car garage, um, that's not, I'm not getting the, the full picture that I should, you might have the greatest it skills in the world, but I'm going to, I, I will tell you, I got off that phone call and said, I, all I saw was up his nose. What was that yeah. all about? You know, that is a good point because uh, I, I, I noticed during uh, the pandemic and the, the, a lot of interviews on like news channels were were talking to specialists and stuff. And mm -hmm. you're slightly for you can be slightly forgiving at the beginning when the laptop is on the desk and it's that up angle and bad lighting and bad sound. But if you're looking for a job, especially one that's remote put a little bit of effort into the system. You know, you want to make mm -hmm. sure the camera's at eye level. When you talk uh, to the person, look at the camera, not at the screen. You know, if you're doing yeah, this yeah, the whole time, exactly. that, that can be, uh, yeah. So so if that's if that's the setup you want to work with, that should be the setup you interview with, yeah. Yeah, very true. Um, so let's, uh, one, one final question. What are some valuable resources such as books, websites, courses, or anything that you would recommend? Is there any, any websites, any training, any, uh, field of interest that, that may be, may be helpful? I mean, like, let's say right now, uh, uh, uh the office line of products are, are constantly changing, you know, the adding mm -hmm. features teams is very relevant is, is there anything else that you see uh, a demand for? You know, um, I was thinking about this question beforehand as far as uh, what growth areas might be. And, you know, to get to say a little bit more about where I'm at in my IT career, um, I've got another 10, 10, 11, 12 years uh, to go in the industry. And, um, I, it may be surprising to a fair amount of you out there, but uh, I really enjoy service. Um, even when Travis and I started working together 23, 24 years ago, um, you know, Travis was an amazing service tech, but he also on his own time started uh, diving into infrastructure and very quickly became, um, you know, our superior resource on the infrastructure side. Um, and that is about the time that I realized that although I love it all, um, I'm less interested in working behind the scenes and, and, you know, configuring whatever I'm much more interested in how the end user is able to use all of the stuff that we provide for them. So, I guess my uh, a plea is not what it is, but a an advertisement is don't forget the service side. Um, you know, people think about it as being something that is, you know, working with end users being and being frustrated all day and getting yelled at and this and that. Sure, that happens, but there are areas of it that you know if you're good at it. Um, it's an area that is always looking for people, uh, supervisors, managers, all of that. Um, so I don't necessarily look at this from a, a growth standpoint. I look at it from serving needs that we already have. Um, we, you, we mentioned security at the very beginning. Um, what did you say, Travis? One out of every three jobs or two out of every three jobs? One out of every three is one open. Out of, yeah. Is open. Um, you know, if you're in the, ind if you are in the industry and, uh, you want to focus on and fill a need that's there right now, you know, 
with some learning and some focus and some talking to the right people, the world is your oyster. Um, I will even say from a services standpoint, software deployment, one of the one of the most important things that an IT department has to do, which is deploy software and keep it patched and all that, finding somebody to to be an expert in whatever configuration manager product is, is, is out there or being used, it's not, there are not a lot of people doing it and there mm-hmm. should be. Um, so that's another area. Um, yeah. But like I said, you know, d- don't forget the service desk. And and I actually get a little embarrassed about security because having been in the industry th- for 30 years, I was there at the big, be- well, the beginning, not the beginning, but the uh, certainly the beginning of the modern desktop era. And we spent the last 20 to 25 years making sure that every industry out there is dependent on computers, is dependent on networks, is dependent on a computer department, all of that. Um, and then 20 years in, we said, oh, um, oh, by the way, it's not very secure. So here's what you have to do now to help us keep this, uh, keep this information safe. Uh, it is, you know, it is something that we all have to do. Uh, but it also is a, it's a problem of our own making in some ways too. Right. You, you touched on something that, uh, I think is important for anybody going into it in general, any, any part of it is, is remember you're there to support a customer. If it's internal customer, external, it doesn't matter. It's, mm-hmm. it, it's not tech technology for technology's sake. There's, there's a reason for it. And, and, uh, not losing sight of that is really important to to being good at at providing those services. 10, 12 years ago, I actually heard a infrastructure person say, um, and they weren't around much longer after, I'm not saying it was a direct correlation, but they weren't around much longer after I overheard this, but the infrastructure person actually said to somebody else, you wouldn't even have a job if it wasn't for me. <laughs> and I was thinking, no, actually, they had this job for years before the IT was there. It was just done differently. Yeah. And, and if that's the adversarial um, attitude you're going to have, um, you're probably not going to go very far. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're running out of time here, Keith. That went by fast. So uh, uh, thanks again for joining me. And uh, uh I hope uh, everyone listening to this found it useful, and uh, I'm sure they will. And thanks again, Keith, for joining me today. Yes, thanks, Travis. It's uh, good to see you, and uh, still waiting for you to come work for me for a third, or work with me, excuse me, work <laughs> with me for a third time. So well, uh, I won't hold my breath. All right. Thanks, thanks Keith. Bye. Bye.